So, given that we have already looked at stress tensor and the strain rate tensor, uh, we are going to deal with materials in this course which will have both solid like and fluid like characteristics and uh, we saw that for fluid like it is sufficient to look at strain rate and stress, but for solid like material it is important to look at the deformation itself. So, therefore, we should also define uh, how do we characterize strain in the material. So, what we will do is uh, look at uh, qualitatively features of strain measures and uh, then we will also try to understand strain and strain rate for two simple flows. So, our plan in this lecture is to look at uh, how do we specify the position of material particles. Then we look at what is meant by strain qualitatively. We Today we will not define uh, the strain and uh, complete in their definition, uh, th but then we will look at uh, given that we know how to specify a material particle, can we then specify the two simple types of fluids uh, flow. One is simple shear flow, the other one is extensional flow as these two flows will be important for our rheological analysis. And so, uh, if you look at uh, the uh, material uh, we had said that it is continuum and it is a collection of material points. So, therefore, each and every material point we can specify its position and uh, the collection of all such positions is called configuration. So, therefore, configuration of a material implies that specifying each and every position of the material particle that the material consists of. And uh, there are of course, uh, uh, what we usually do is we think of specifying the material particle positions in three different ways. We always define a current time, okay, so that we will call the current configuration. So, that we say that at the present time we will specify where is each and every material particle. Okay. And then we will also have a possibly sometimes a reference configuration. So, for example, uh, in case of a solid let us say I take a block of solid and uh, I apply a shear deformation on it, right. And so, uh, and then uh, at time t is equal to 0, I apply shear, right. So, what will happen is, uh, of course, the material uh, will get deformed, right, simple shear. And so, uh, and then after some time I can say what is the present configuration. So, therefore, that will be called the current configuration. So, at any time t, okay. So, any time t. So, in this case it, it also makes sense for us to say that let me adopt when the material was undeformed and it was stress free whatever were the positions of material particles I will call that reference configuration, right. So, in the, so this then uh, will become the current configuration and this becomes the reference configuration. I need these two to specify whether there is deformation in the material, right. If uh, let us say uh, this solid body is only translating, right. So, what uh, then in that case what I can say is let us say if this is a coordinate system and then I have a solid body and I can specify the material particle each and every material particle after some time uh, the solid block has translated. So, of course, each and every material particle now position has changed, it is the overall configuration of the material has changed, but I know that there is no deformation in the material, right. So, I, I need these two configuration, then I need to compare the configuration for each neighboring particle. I need to ask the question that if I take two neighboring po points here and they had some positions, the same two points in this new configuration what are their relative positions and if the relative positions do not change I will say oh it looks like two configurations. So, in case of solids it is relatively easy to say that I will choose stress free configuration undeformed configuration. 
So, this is in case of uh, solid like materials. Now, when we look at completely fluid uh, materials, current configuration is again easy to justify saying that. So, whatever are the material particle positions at the current time? What about uh, can we define something called uh, stress free configuration for fluids? Yes, static fluid, but unfortunately there are multiple ways of being static fluid, right? In the sense I can put the fluid static in a big uh, trough, then also it is stress free and I can put it in a long big uh, jar and again it will be stress free. So, there is no unique stress free configuration for fluid. So, then uh, how do we, what do we talk about, right? Uh, so, how, how do we specify? So, what we have uh, in case of fluids, so let us uh, what we do is we say the current configuration is completely known and uh, that is the one which then becomes the basis. Because we need two configurations to define deformation for defining strain measure. In fluid like case, what we will say for example, let us say this is again a simple shear flow. So, this fluid is again moving with our uh, simple shear velocity profile. So, we say here that uh, the current time and we will say that any other time, whether in the past or in future, we will compare the configuration with respect to the current configuration because there is no point talking in fluid about some stress free or reference configuration. Only the current configuration can act as a basis, okay. So, what will happen let us say in the past and what will happen in the future. So, let us just look at uh, what, what I can do just as a uh, example, uh, I will uh, say that this is a plate and the plate is moving and therefore, uh, because the plate is moving the top layer of fluid is moving and then slower, slower and sl slow on till this plate when velocity is 0. Now, I define now present time, I take a snapshot and I put my coordinate system and uh, label each and every material particle. So, this becomes my 1 1 point, this becomes my 2 2 point and so on. Right. So, there are so many material particles and each of them now I have labeled. Now, what happens to these material points in future? How will they look like? So, something like this. Something like this, right? it would look something like this. So, that uh, the uh, fluid particles keep on moving and then if I now compare these two, then I can say that yes deformation has taken place in the material. If the whole fluid was moving at a rigid body, then what I will see is again between two points there would not be any relative displacement. So, therefore, deformation was 0. So, we start uh, saying that uh, there is current configuration. And then we say configuration at any time t tau configuration at an arbitrary time tau and the current time we will specify as t while tau is a time which is with respect to the present time either in the past or future. When tau is equal to t, what do we mean? Current time, right. So, uh, and similarly in the past also you can see, right. Uh, so, in the past how will the grid look like? It will be basically some grid like this. Here is there are three configurations, current configuration which is present time t, reference configuration which is useful for solids where it is clearly defined in terms of an undeformed configuration. And then configuration at an arbitrary time, which is the arbitrary time is tau. Uh, when tau is more than t, 
we know its future when tau is less than t we know it was past. And so we also call uh, each of these, so in this case uh, these uh, reference points uh, these are uh, given name capital X, uh, here uh, these are uh, given small x and uh, here these are given, this is the position vector of a given material point. No, this right now what we are discussing is completely general, it has, it is not in fact restricted to also shear or any such thing, right. I am drawing it for shear and then trying to motivate uh, the, but, but generally all reference configuration where each and every material particles position vector is known, then there may be a current configuration in which each and every material particle position vector is known and similarly future uh, at arbitrary time tau. And so all of these, uh, it is a completely general no assumption regarding Reynolds number, no assumption regarding type of deformation, nothing, it is a very general statement. In fact, uh, whatever quantities we define whether it is strain or strain rate should be for very general situations. You can define strains, right. So two ways that we have talked about, the fact uh, if I solve problem one way or same answer and that will happen but the only thing is sometimes it becomes more convenient to use this and some other time it becomes convenient to use this and clearly what we have said is in case of solids it is more convenient to use this, in case of fluids it is more convenient to use this but given that we are dealing with materials which are both solid like and fluid like, we can use any one and therefore if you look at liter literature in rheology you will see unfortunately for us uh, to uh, understand immediately is difficult because some people will use this approach, some people will use this approach and so that depends on their historical uh, learnings and their historical interest. Therefore they will either, if they have come from the uh, solid side to look at uh, complex materials, they might tend to use this approach if these approaches are used. And given that uh, these are uh, uh, fairly complicated, uh, therefore we are not defining them now because for discussing initial uh, aspects of rheology, we do not need their detailed definition. But you still need to know that strain measure is an important quantity and the fact that they can be defined in multiple ways. So uh, as I said basis or reference, it can be uh, X, capital X which is the reference configuration and for solids uh, undeformed configuration is used as a reference configuration and therefore uh, displacement for each material particle is what was the position vector particle has moved, right. So in this case, this is small x, uh, sorry this is capital X, the same material particle here is donated by small x and what is this vector? Displacement is useful for us to find strain because it is not just displacement but relative displacement of two neighboring material particles will determine whether there is deformation or not. So the other option is to choose current configuration and which is used usually for fluids because there are infinite undeformed uh, configurations possible and the current configuration is used as a basis and displacement for each material particle in this case is x tau minus x. So what is the displacement at present time? Always 0, right. So in fact in fluid what we will see is uh, since the basis is current time, the strain will be always 0 and the current time because that is the basis, does not mean fluid is not deforming. So that is something we have to get used to the idea. In this case whenever solid is undeformed, only strain will be 0 but in case of fluids, fluid is continuously deforming and there is deformation rate and strain in the material but you ask the question what is the strain at present time, answer will always be 0 because present time with respect to present time will always be 0. So we will, the way we set up uh, the Gavani equations and the strain tensors, we will see that therefore we will have to measure any arbitrary time with respect to present time and that will tell us. The other important thing that we will notice in case of fluid is even though current strain is 0, current strain rate will not be 0. 
does that make sense? Strain is 0, but strain rate is not 0, right. Its material is flowing right from here to here to here, there is continuous strain rate, but at present time strain is 0. So, in fact, derivative of a constant quantity is, is not 0. <laughs> So, strain itself is 0, but its derivative is, so that is why it is not simple derivative. So, that is a point, another point we have made that we will tend to use convected rate. So, we will see that convected rate of a constant quantity will not be 0. So, the, those are, some, so this is something which we, so that is why going between strain and strain rate, we should always remember that these two quantities are not related as simple derivatives we will see late strain rate can be related as a partial derivative. Otherwise, they are uh, more complicated uh, relation in terms of convected derivative. Just the way we said that there is partial derivative, material or substantial derivative, we also have convected derivatives that we talked about earlier, strain rates in these kind of deformations. So, therefore, just to summarize uh, qualitatively, as I said, we will not define these strain tensors because uh, for our some of our initial rheological discussion, we will look at mostly fluid like materials and we may not need the strain, but some of these ideas are important therefore, we should keep them in mind. So, the first thing is that uh, given that uh, stress and strain rate tensors uh, have 9 components, strain will also have 9 components because displacement is in 3 directions and the relative displacement, gradient in displacement is also possible in 3 direction. So, therefore, you have 9 components and uh, the simplified definition of strain as change in length to initial length, this is valid only for very simplistic uh, situations like the rod extension or a simple shear flow, but in general we have a 3 dimensional field where there will be displacement possible in all 3 directions. So, we will define actually a strain tensor which we will call infinitesimal strain tensor, which is only valid for very small deformation. In fact, those of you who have done solid mechanics course have only dealt with this tensor, strain tensor and that strain tensor is not valid uh, even standing or when we talk of plasticity of steel. So, anywhere there are large deformations then we should, we cannot use this strain tensor because it is valid, though it is a 3 dimensional tensor, it is only valid for very small deformation. And then uh, depending on the reference or basis, as I said, we can use either current configuration or reference configuration, uh, there are several tensors which are defined, which we are not going to define now. In a more advanced class, later in the course, we will define these. Uh, any of you have done solid mechanics, uh, I mean uh, finite uh, elasticity, finite deformations course, large deformations. So, you finger strain tensor or continuum mechanics. Mechanic. So, you have been exposed to the finite strain tensor. So, any uh, time when we look at uh, materials with arbitrary large deformations, then we need to define these as strain measures. Uh, and uh, all the finite strain tensor of course, will reduce to infinitesimal strain tensor for small deformations. So, this is uh, a, a usual thing which we expect in any branch of science. For example, any complicated equation of state should reduce to ideal gas because we know under some condition molecular interactions can be ignored. So, a gas should behave like ideal gas, but in many other situations it may have lots of interactions. So, therefore, we need a more complicated equation of state. But the expectation is no matter how complicated equation of state under some condition it should reduce to ideal gas. So, similarly here also no matter what definition since they are all consistent they will reduce to infinitesimal strain tensors for small deformation. So, that is why in our uh, solid mechanics courses there is no need to define all these different bases and multiple strain tensor because all of them will reduce to only infinitesimal strain tensor. So, there is only one strain tensor required. Only when you have large deformations, then all these multiple options become important. And uh, as I said for our initial discussions, we will only focus on the infinitesimal strain tensor. And just to again uh, 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 qualitatively continue uh, the information. So, strain tensors are of course, the measure of uh, deformation of the material. They reduce to either unit tensor or zero tensor for translation, 
okay, depending on what tensor is defined, not all of them reduce to 0. Our expectation intuitively will be also should go to 0, but some of the strain measures will only go to unity. You subtract unity from that, you will get 0. So, we will see that some of the strains are defined as some quantity minus unit, unity tensor, so that we get zeros. So, that is why some of them will reduce to unit tensor, some of them will reduce to 0 tensor tensor or 0 tensor for translation as well as rotation. So, which is again expected that once there is rigid body translation and rigid body rotation, we should not have deformation measures. And infinitesimal strain tensor actually all reduces to 0 tensor for translation and very small rotation. So, we can show in fact that uh, if let us say I take a block like this and then I rotate it. and then I evaluate the infinitesimal strain tensor which we will define, we will show that we will be able to show that if this theta is very small then uh, it is fine, but otherwise we will get uh, non-zero terms in this infinitesimal strain tensor. So, clearly it should not be used for large theta, that is why it is always used for small deformations. It gives us correct results for only small deformations. And the as I mentioned, uh, time derivatives of strain measures are used for quantifying rates of no, given that for fluid we only need strain rate, for solid we only need strain, we have now materials where both of these are involved. So, therefore, we will need strain as well as strain rates. So, we will need to not only uh, have a measure of strain, we will also need its derivative and so we will have to find these derivatives and we will see that convected rates of strain measure can be related to velocity gradient and strain rate tensor. So, that is where I mentioned that in using current configuration as the basis, strain is constant at present time, but its derivative will not be constant because it is a convected rate. And for small deformations only the partial derivative of strain is equivalent to strain rate tensor. So, fortunately whenever we have small deformations we can go back and forth between strain and strain rate easily without taking care of strain convected and other uh, more complicated time rates. So, we can just take partial derivative or just quickly integrate and get from strain to strain rate or strain rate to strain. Okay. So, now uh, we can look at uh, two simple flows and try to look at these quantities for those simple flows. Uh, 